I get through an awful lot of bottles doing this whole whiskey YouTube thing. Some of them are better than others. I thought now would be a great time to go through some of my favourites so far of 2022. Welcome back Dram Fam to the Whiskey Diary. So I've got nearly a hundred episodes planned in my kind of library of episodes that I want to shoot. And I was sitting down last night thinking about what I was going to shoot today. And I didn't fancy shooting any of them. A lot of them are quite longer format videos and I wanted to do something a little bit more informal. And to be honest, kind of share what I've been going through recently with whiskey. Because I do this channel for me and I absolutely love it and I love sharing the kind of things that I experience with you. But if there is anything specifically, you know, that, that you want to learn about, you want to know any bottles you want reviewed, I'm always on the lookout for new things to cover because I don't know what I don't know about whiskey. So if you do have anything, drop a comment down below, get subscribed, and I'll see if I can cover it for you. On that note, we are so close to 950 or well so close to nearly a thousand subscribers which is absolutely insane I, I i kind of it kind of snuck up on me a little bit and i'm super super grateful for everyone that watches everyone that likes everyone that comments and everyone that subscribes to this channel because i'm really really enjoying doing it i think when we hit the 1000 subscriber mark i'm going to do a live stream and i'm going to go through i've got like just under just over 200 bottles um, I'm gonna put them all on my website and you can choose anything and we'll sit down and we'll just drink it you're gonna get to choose what I drink for a whole evening so hopefully I'll see you all there but anyway back to this episode so this was meant to be a like top five so far in 2022 and quite honestly I couldn't really choose kind of narrowed it down to seven and just couldn't work out which ones I wanted to cut so I just included all of them. It's a lot, but I'm going to kind of whip through them fairly quickly. I will preface this with these are bottles I've bought in 2022. These are not whiskies that released in 2022. These are just bottles that were new to me. See, I've only been into whiskey kind of a year or two, a bit longer maybe. I don't even remember anymore. So there's loads and loads of bottles out there that I haven't discovered yet. So as I say, these are new to me for 2022. Usually when I do like a top five or a top whatever in this category of whiskey, I like to put some rules on it. Didn't want to do it this time. This is literally just what I like to drink right now. Whiskies that excite me. Whiskies that I go to the shelf and I just can't like not grab. So this list is not exhaustive. There are no rules to it. There is no kind of specifics. These are just whiskies that I go yeah, that is a great whiskey. Lastly, they are in no particular order, but there is one which I'm going to save to the end because I think that whiskey is a little bit special and I feel like it should, you know, be at the top, as it were, of the list. But anyway, let's get down to drinking some whiskey. First things first, we have the Gauldrons. I've spoken, Jesus Christ, I've made a, a good dent in that. Um, I've spoken about this a couple of times on the channel before. I've never done a review of it. This is a blended Campbelltown whiskey. It is a no age statement. It's bottled at 46.2%. It is unchill filtered. It is all natural color. And you can pick this up for less than 50 pounds on Master of Malt. So the reason I chose this is it's a blend. It was one of the first blends that really excited me and made me realize blends can be incredible. It's juicy, it's creamy, it's rich, it's got just a hint of smoke in there. But what it really is, is very, very Campbelltown. This is the spirit and the essence of Campbelltown in a bottle for less than £50. Pounds. You're going to be really, really hard pressed to find that at the moment. Campbelltown whiskies are becoming increasingly more expensive and hard to get hold of. Nothing wrong with that. You know, it is what it is, people are going to chase them, but for other people that are just not that fussed and just want to experience what that region is about, this is such a fantastic chance to do that for a very reasonable price. As I say, it's got all the numbers we like, um, the price is right, and it is a Campbelltown, and you can actually buy this pretty easily. It's not that hard to get hold of. In fact, I think it's up on Master of Malt at the minute. So highly recommend this. If you're someone that just wants to experience a good blended whiskey, 
or wants to get like a real taste of Campbelltown without having to pay out for the more expensive Campbelltown whiskies. So moving on, the next bottle we have here is the King's Inch. I reviewed this on the channel very recently. Uh, I can't put it down. I can't stop going back to it. It is a fantastic, fantastic whiskey. So this is a Lowland single malt whiskey. It is no age statement. It is distilled by an unnamed distillery, but it's probably Glasgow Distillery. Bottled up at 46%, unchill filtered, all natural color. It is a mix of bourbon and Oloroso casks. It's currently 45 pounds on Master of Malt. This is such a light, bright, fruity, easy to drink whiskey. Uh, I highly recommend you go and watch my full review of it. I'll go into it in a bit more detail. But the reason it's on this list today is because right now the weather's starting to warm up and for me this is such a summer dram as i'm starting to hang out with more friends and family and stuff a lot of people are asking me oh they, you know they want recommendations and i keep coming back to this i keep recommending it it's such an accessible whiskey for new drinkers it's interesting enough for people that are you know a little bit more into their whiskey while it might not be anything sort of super special to write home about not every whiskey that's incredible needs to be super special and something to write home about it's just a demonstration of a really really good well-produced whiskey that's got good casks and good new make spirit and it's priced at a point which is accessible enough for people to get hold of to me that speaks volumes about the quality of the product. And so yeah, that's why it's ended up on this list today. I absolutely love this stuff. And uh, yeah, I really like the bottle as well. So moving on to the next one. This one is a little bit more interesting. This is the Falls of Caledonia by Heroes and Heretics. I'm actually gonna pour myself a glass of this one now because I absolutely love this stuff. Whew. So this is a space side. This is from the Glen Tockers distillery. It's a six year old whiskey. Bottled up at 54%, unchill filtered, all natural color. I believe it's from a full maturation sherry hogshead and uh, six years old and that kind of color, I definitely wouldn't be surprised. You can pick this up for 60 pounds a bottle. It was sold out on a couple of the websites I went to, but I'm sure you can probably find it about somewhere. The reason that this is on this list is it's just got so much flavor for a six year old whiskey. This is proof that age does not matter when it comes to whiskey. This is juicy, rich, tons of raisins, uh, toffee, chocolate, even a little bit menthol going on in there. This has just got bags and bags of flavor. The texture is thick and viscous and mouth coating and sweet and sticky and delicious. Glen Tockers is not a distillery. I see about very much at all. I think I've got one other Glen Tockers and it's an independent bottling, uh, much like this one is. This really does prove what a six-year-old whiskey can do if you employ good wood, really good cask management. If you're careful about the casks you choose and when to pull it, this could have easily sat in a cask for another two years or so and been ruined. But if you pull the whiskey out of the cask when it's good to go, you're gonna end up with something like this. This is just incredible. Anyway, moving on to the next. We have the Kilhoman Madeira cask. This is from Isla, from the Kilhoman distillery. It is technically a no age statement, but you can find the distillery and bottling um, dates. It's a about a six year old, bottled up at 50%, unchill filtered, all natural color. It's uh, spent some time in Madeira cask because it says so on the front, but that's about it. I don't know any more about the cask recipe for this. It was peated with 50 part per million malt and I picked this up for around, I think it was 75 quid, directly uh, from the distillery's website. The reason that this is on the list is because this is a really, really good example of what a distillery can do when they put their spirit into a weird cask. A cask which on paper, should not work. Kilhome and Spirit for me has got quite a prickly peat about it. It's not subtle. It's not like a subtle smokiness. Kilhome and is a peaty whiskey. Madeira is quite a, I'm not gonna say mild, that's the wrong word, but it's like a quite a zesty, floral, 
sweet d dessert fortified wine. I'm actually not exactly sure what the um, what Madeira's classification is, but on paper, I don't see those flavors marrying together. Boy, was I wrong. It's just got such a bright citrusy candy sweetness with bitter chocolate, but then those kind of medicinal smoky notes come through. It's delicate at the same time as being robust and full on. It has that Kilhoman bright peatiness that I really, really like. And it's got all of that floral, juicy, slightly nutty, nectarine citrusiness that I really like from Madeira and they've married perfectly well. It's a wonderful contrast of flavors and it's just an example of what you know a distillery can do when they experiment and have fun with some casks. I assume that was the motivation for this. But I think the main takeaway here is if you see weird casks from, I say weird casks, but you see casks from distilleries and in your head you're saying, I'm not sure that's gonna work, give it a punt. You could be very pleasantly surprised. Any of you that watch the channel with any regularity will know that I've reviewed this before. This is the Whiskey Baron, 15 year old Gervin that has been bottled for the Somerton Whiskey Club. As I say, 15 year old Gervin Distillery. This is a single grain whiskey. It's the only single grain on the list. It was bottled up at 51.4%. All natural color, unchill filtered. This has spent its life in a bourbon cask and it was re-racked into port, which is very interesting for a grain whiskey. It was of course 50 pounds from the Somerton Whiskey Club. Why is this on the list? Because it's delicious. It's like drinking peanut butter whiskey candy. It is one of the most Moorish whiskies on the shelf. It's very predictable. You could argue it's somewhat one dimensional, but it's just very consistent from start to finish. That's, I guess, both a blessing and a curse. Grain whiskey, in my opinion, grain whiskey right now is on the up. I've heard more people talking about grain whiskey, more people engaging with grain whiskey and not taking it at this, our oh, grain whiskey is just cheap crap compared to single malt. It's just not the case. And it's whiskies like this that really, really prove Grain whiskey can be absolutely stunning for a very, very reasonable price. So, right, second to last one. This is the Macrimore Fingles Cut. This is a no age statement from the Aaron Distillery. This is bottled up at cask strength. It is 54.4%, unchill filtered, all natural color. What makes this interesting is this is a heavily peated whiskey that's been finished in a sherry cask. More specifically, an Oloroso sherry quarter cask. And you can pick this up for 60 pounds directly from the distillery. This, again, is another one of these instances where you're taking a whiskey and putting it into a fantastic cask. Sherry quarter cask has got loads and loads of flavor to give. Heavily peated whiskey in sherry is probably one of my new favorite things. I spoke briefly that the uh, the Gervin, the, the Whiskey Baron, doesn't have a huge amount of evolution. That's not necessarily a bad thing. This is the opposite. This thing starts peaty, briny, almost medicinal, and then it becomes sweeter. And at the end, the finish on it is like nutty. And right in the middle, you've just got tons and tons of fruit, like red berries. This is a prime example of whiskies that have tons of evolution. You're using the spirit to define its kind of its front end, and then you're using the casks to bring the evolution, bring that change. It ebbs and flows as you're drinking it. Aaron makes some incredible unpeated whiskies, and this is proof that they can do it on the peated side of things well. Very, very, very impressed with this whiskey, and it's affordable and it's available. Highly recommend you go and pick up a bottle of this. And last, but by no means least, we have a bottle which is kind of special. This is the Ben English whiskey that has been bottled by North Star Spirits. This is an 11 year old from the English whiskey company. It is bottled up at 51.8%, unchill filtered, all natural color. This was, I believe it was full maturation, but it could have been finished. Going by the color, I would not be surprised if it was full maturation in a Sautern cask. This is 70 pounds a bottle directly from the North Star Spirits website. What makes this special is that this is a charity bottling. All proceeds of this bottle go to a charity called The Ben, which is the Bene Benevolent Society. 
They are a Scottish charity that look after people that uh, work in the licensed trade and hospitality sectors, which has obviously been very important in the last couple of years, what with the coronavirus pandemic. It is very cool of North Star Spirits to put all of the proceeds for this bottle to them, but moreover, the whiskey is stunning. Uh, this was actually, the, well, not the bottle, but I, I bought a dram of this by a guy called Whiskey With Molly on Twitter. Many of you probably know him. The dude's an absolute legend. But yeah, he bought me a dram of this in the pub and I literally could not stop thinking about it. Oh, I, could, I just kept kind of reliving that taste in my head. And so uh, he actually dropped me a link on Twitter and I bought a bottle of it and I do not regret it at all. In fact, I might have a nip on this now. On the nose, it's just got like a spicy raisin kind of juiciness going on. But on the palate, oh my God, it's like it's like drinking liquid Frutella. The stuff is just bags and bags and bags of juicy, juicy like candy fruits. It is a stunning whiskey. It's only 11 years old. I've got a ton of whiskies on the shelf behind me, which are a lot older and a lot more expensive than this and don't have nearly as much just full on like mouth coating flavor that this does. Sauterne casks are not something I'm hugely familiar with. If this is anything to go by, they're gonna very quickly turn into a firm, firm favorite. This is an incredible, incredible whiskey. And obviously all the money is going to such a fantastic cause. I did speak to North Star Spirits very briefly. They said they do have quite a few bottles of this left. So I'll drop links to all of these bottles down below so you can hit those links and pick up a bottle from there. Man, I love whiskey. Some of these bottles are some of my absolute favorites of all time. And every day, every week that goes past, I'm discovering new whiskies that I'm enjoying more and more and more. These are stunning examples of what the whiskey industry is producing at the moment and what we've got coming. So I just cannot wait to see what we do in the next few years. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you've liked this episode, please do drop a like and let me know if you've tried any of these and what your thoughts are if you think there's any whiskies that I need to try in the comments down below. If you'd like to support the channel, please do consider subscribing. And on that note, Slangevar. Christ, that's good.